Seriously, why did one of Starscream's clones come up a girl? I I've talked to Derek J. Wyatt personally about this, and I still don't know! So here's one of those toys that I could have sworn I've already reviewed, but I searched all over my YouTube channel, TFCC, BotCon, uh, Slipstream, cannot find this toy anywhere. So let's just talk about it now, and I'll mark it re-review if, uh, if I somehow missed a search or something. So here we have Transformers Collectors Club Slipstream, part of the 2013 subscription service. You had to pay for it in advance and wait for it to come in the mail. Mm, don't you just love just, you know, having to wait months before you actually get the toy you already paid for? It's always fun. So here we have a very, very nice rendition of Transformers Prime First Edition Starscream, one of the last molds out of Hasbro before the budgets got really, really tight meaning there's a lot of design elements and engineering that went into this that is still really, really solid. Uh, it is based on the F-16 Fighting Falcon, if I can recall the TF Wiki entry correctly, and it's a very nice, very sleek jet mode, I mean, aside from the big robot mode legs hanging from the bottom, but please ignore those in all facets of this toy. But it's, look, so sleek going through here. Such nice lines. And ignore the giant robot mode legs. I told you to ignore them. But, yeah, the wings I like. Very sharp, very uh, angled back. Works really well. Why are you still looking at the legs? Ignore the robot mode legs. So, yeah. If you can't tell, I'm really annoyed at how much under kibble is on this toy without any kind of way of hiding it whatsoever. It doesn't help that this color scheme also brings out... Uh, her lower legs that are very much, very much standing out from the rest of her. So, unfortunately, uh, some of the color patterns not really working. The rest of it I quite like, though. She has this nice lavender uh, plastic color going on, along with plenty of this nice metallic teal paint. They could have, they swore up and down it wasn't, but man, it is very G2 Ramjet in colors. Very, very nice. Interesting paint pattern going through here. It's almost as if this piece that's going to end up on the chest is trying to actually imitate and be part of the cockpit, even though it's nowhere close. And then you got this part that's sitting in the middle that's doing the same thing. It's, again, nowhere close. But hey, it's this nice little three-point pattern. Still looks really, really nice. More paint back here, more here. Jets in the back, clustered up with, a, with a, her feet, which I guess you could assume are... Extra thrusters. Oh, use your imagination there. Uh, no fold-out landing gear. Little stubs molded in, but hey. She doesn't roll, but as long as she doesn't get scraped up when you're uh, leaving her on a desk somewhere, uh, that still works out fine. She also comes with a bit of accessory, which comes in the form of these two missile pods, which are a much softer plastic than the rest of her, meaning your missiles might end up a wee bit curved. This is a sidewinder, as in it always winds to the side at some point. Uh, but they're easy enough to just remove if you don't like how they look there. We'll see them again at some other point. The nose cone also, of course, because even though this is a collector's oriented toy from a collector's service, we still have to conform to U.S. safety laws, and isn't that always fun? So yeah, aside from a lot of undercarriage, very nice vehicle. I really, really like the color scheme. Really like the overall shape. And now we go to the robot mode, and this is the fun part, because this is an interesting interesting transformation that I hope I can get right without fumbling through it. So, the first thing, of course, is we disconnect the robot legs. And look, if you just ignore the legs, look look how nice the jet is. It's so much better already. I mean, a weird gray thing hanging out, but hey, a little bit better. So, I'm going to wind this around. And I'm going to, uh, we're going to leave that there just for now, just because it's a little bit easier to handle things before this is all locked into place. Well, we can do it now, I guess. Rotate that cockpit around, clicks in, and then double hinge these tabs into the underside of the cockpit. And that's pretty much the lower half of the robot. I mean, we can open up the feet. That does help it stand up, I find. 
And then you got some optional things, and we'll get to those uh, in a bit, just so I don't have to fumble around them. Unclip the wings from the sides here, and again on double hinges, they can go backward. You can also angle them up, which gives a little bit more of a sharp profile. From here, we're going to uh, disconnect this section, bring it down. That's going to rotate down like that. And then the arms. The whole thing splits open, rotates down on ball joints coming up uh, in that direction. You can fold out the hands now or wait. That's the scary part of this transformation for me. So we have to pull these out on these little sliding pins and thankfully the plastic is solid enough to handle that until you hear that little click without really uh, giving me too much issue. I'm gonna go ahead and double hinge, fold out the hands. A lot of double hinges on this toy. Well, when you are when you got such small parts and sleek designs, I guess that's to be expected. A lot of little fiddly stuff in order to get things correct. Speaking of, here's a whole mass of stuff that we have to deal with in order to finish off the robot mode. Speaking of fiddly, uh, the part you need nails for to get these, uh, get the tail fin split apart and Luckily, I have just enough of a thumbnail left to accomplish this. Mm. Or maybe I don't. Ugh, this is going to be problematic if I can't do this part. I, I, I come unclipped. Unclip. Unclip. It's my call for a jump cut. Ugh, I can't get it. I can't get it apart. This is humiliating. Yeah, hang on, guys. Haha, -ha, I found the one fingernail long enough to actually get between the fins parts. It wasn't my fingernail, but hey, it's open now, so we can continue. We will continue by unfolding the head from here. And here's the fun part. Now, the instructions themselves and all the pegs tell you to hunch this thing over. And that will allow these two, section, these two pegs here to fit in and allow that to fit into where it's supposed to go. But it also gives her a hunched over look that doesn't quite work. So we're going to leave it straight. And we're going to rely on a little bit of friction to hold things together. As well as hopefully a little bit of uh, the backpack smooshing together. So with all this done, we can plug this piece in. Bring that down to the front, to the bottom here. which Because it's this nice little uh, back thruster thing going on. That... Is going to just about do it. We can also, optionally, flip out the little fins. Man, remember the days when tiny little details like this were included? You don't really get things like that anymore. All right. So with those optional pieces out, we can go ahead and stand her up and enjoy the full splendor that is the Deluxe Slipstream. Though Deluxe is generous because, man, she is... Tall. And she is quite the tall figure. Do I have a modern deluxe? Do I have one currently? Yes, I do. She is quite the height on her. Uh, a lot of that, of course, comes from how slender her parts are. So, of course, she's going to make up for that somewhere. But it's also because of she, a lot of uh, transformation tricks that kind of have an animated lockdown feel to them, you know? So, where a very tiny jet mode, well, at least feels like a tiny jet mode turns into quite the large robot, which is also kind of nice for a dollar value standpoint. Taking a look at the head, we can see she has been completely resculpted from first edition Starscream. Very, very nice. There's enough Starscream-ish elements in there, especially if you look at the Prime design, to kind of pass off as the Starscream clone, or at the very least, another Seeker. But much smoother lines, a little bit more round here and there, and of course, a more feminine lip. Very, very nice. I think this does a pretty good job of giving Slipstream her own identity rather than just being, you know, another Starscream. And I wouldn't mind this being a little bit more of the standardized head. Which, uh, oh, you still want to uh, do that G1 style-ish female head. Uh, they did that for the Unite War... What, which one was it? The Legends Slipstream in Japan? Still works out sometimes, but I really do like the head. So once again, a lot of purple plastic dominating, but now we have that teal plastic from the underside of Jet Mode to contend with. Looking like she has very bright, knee-high boots going on. 
and a lot more gray worked into the color scheme here, breaking up the colors quite nicely. I also really like what happens in the midsection here. I like, aside from just the hits of black here and there, I like the faux cockpit it forms between her belly and the chest. It's a little bit of a missed area in the original uh, Prime Starscream design, working really, really well here to kind of give a little bit of the uh, vibe of the classic character, at least the original design anyway. You can see more hits of the black around the knees, as well as the feet, which have a little bit of the teal paint just for the toes. And uh, let's see, got more across the block. More black across the forearms, along with a little bit of teal here. Lots of color all over, tons of paint on this, including up here at the chest. I like how it's accentuating that sharp design on the shoulders. It's very nice. Tons of really good paint. One thing, I have a lot I could say about TFCC, but one thing that's hard to take away is they really do just layer the paint onto their toys in order to create whatever character or appearance they are going for and it generally works and looks really really good so on that very very nice mold wise very very nice she keeps a lot of clean details going not a whole lot of kibble and what is still there is used pretty effectively i'd say the only thing uh missing is she kind of has a stinger butt going on with the nose cone that's a little bit unfortunate a little bit waspinator of her but I do like how a lot of this, uh, a lot of the structure that formed kind of a, her tail fin, head, and all that, kind of accordions together into something of a jetpack form. So it looks like she's still flight capable, even in robot mode. And the two twin wing thing going on is very nice. I like how the wings angle in different directions too. You can have them uh, sweeping back if you want. You know, you can. Put them downwards and outwards, more like a traditional Seeker look. I kind of prefer them up and back, though. It's a bit more of a different look. I think it works better for uh, the female design as well. Also, since uh, we're in this mode, we can go ahead and reintroduce her missile pods, which form onto her arms, since any good Seeker is going to have arm-mounted weaponry on both sides. So, of course, she's going to have that as well. I really do like the look of the toy overall. Really do. Especially if you trick the transformation and just go ahead and leave her torso straight up. It's really well thought out. Because aside from, like, when Starscream's hunched over, it's a really creepy kind of slender. When it's upright like this, cast like this, it makes her a really good feminine mold. You know, it's a very smooth transition from one to the other. And it's, it, it's, it's a really inspired choice. Like, I think, I honestly think TFCC was incredibly on point with this particular choice and decision. So, articulation-wise, she does have a completely ball-jointed head, full range of motion. Doesn't rotate all the way around, but you get a lot of up and down as well. Since she's supposed to be hunched over by mold design, her head's supposed to be up here, which means now, instead of that, she has tons of room to look in just about every direction. It also has really good ball joints at the shoulders. The wings are going to get in the way, but again, the wings are adjustable, so you do have that range of posability. Bicep, full rotation, works great. 90 degree elbow and a bend here at the wrist, double bend if you need it. Nothing at the waist because we had to click that into place for this mode. Ball joints in the hips work really, really well. You can see there, there's also a thigh swivel. For some extra range knees 90 degree not bad at all you're gonna have a little bit of trouble with the foot because it's on these it's a really weird four prong system going on but thankfully since uh the transformation requires the foot to fold in on itself it does mean you can balance her quite well just by adjusting those and they're actually quite stiff joints so you have plenty of uh you have plenty of room there or you should be able to stabilize just about any pose she comes up looking really really nice i think the only downside to her is there's no way to really hold standard weaponry on her but she seems pretty well armed wouldn't you say so that my friends is tfcc slipstream it's not often i commend tfcc on creative decisions 
but this one hits it out of the park. Aside from a character that fans really wanted a good toy of ever since animated, it's an inspired mold choice and a really nice head sculpt that fits with the original design and still has this feminine look to it that better represents uh, what they're overall going for. Paint job is really well done, detailing really well done, and just overall, there's not really a whole lot going wrong here. This is, in my opinion, one of TFCC's best offerings probably ever.